These ain't vanity lights. They something. I don't know if they vanity, but they lights. Oh. Vanity lights usually got. Oh, they did, but I think that. <laughs> This is Oliver Twist with Funky.Neva.com here with another exclusive. <laughs> so the doll sent the nerd on a mission to see what Atlanta hairstylist Coco has been up to. Not like the most of you, I met Coco through the BET reality TV show, Ink, Paper, Scissors, detailing the lives of hairstylists, nail techs, and tattoo artists, all working in the iconic ATL hair salon, Salon Ramsey. Of course, you know, when you put a bunch of black bitches and together, it's gonna be a whole bunch of bullshit, ratchet shit, purdy shit, metal shit, nasty shit. When I first caught wind that BET was jumping into the ratchet reality pool, I was shocked. Cause you know, BET tries to be black excellence and prim and proper and oh, we don't do that. We put on quality programming that no one watches. So with Ink, Paper, Scissors, I was like, finally BET, something I can watch. But out of all of the little gutter butt nasty shit that occurred on Ink, Paper, Scissors, hairstylist by the name of Coco reigned supreme. She got on my nerves episode after episode of being petty, nasty, vindictive, backbiting, ratchet, foolish, aggravating. Do you get the point? So we started talking on the internet and whatnot, and, and basically she was telling me that the person depicted on the show was not who she was in real life, and how dare I judge her by what we saw on television. News flash, honey. The camera can only show what you give. So if you give them your ass, don't be mad when they show us how well you white, bitch. So the nerd went and had a sit down with Coco where we had an in-depth conversation about her sh and shenanigans on ink, paper, scissors. And she gave me a lot. Here is your chance to vindicate yourself. Explain what we don't know because all we know is that you like to show out. Ladies and gentlemen, here is my sit down with none other than the crazy cucamonga herself, Coco. I'm talking about ink, paper, scissors. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. Ink, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. One day I said rock, paper, scissors. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I am sitting with the villain of the show, Miss Coco. <laughs> 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 For so freaking long, BET has had poor selections when it comes to programming. The BET we see today is not the BET we saw 2006, 2007. Yeah. College Hill, Baldwin Hills. 106 Hill, and Park. 106 and Park. Okay. All the, right. Well, yeah, they had to let that one go. They shouldn't have. Because I learned a lot of moves off of Uncut. Nah, I ain't getting married for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw this show, and I was like, oh my God. This is some fabricated, ghetto, fabulous, entertaining, ratchet sh But like, it was like a classy ratchet, though. We always looked like... We all look nice in here. No damn classy ratchet. Yes, there is. No damn classy ratchet. Y'all looked nice. It's called class shit. Y'all yes, were is. bottom of the barrel ratchet, gutter but butt. But we look nice. Horrible, nasty ass, rude people to each other. But, but I watched nice. all ten episodes like in two days. Eight episodes. Oh, sorry. I was trying to give y'all the benefit of the doubt. Mm. <laughs> For season one, y'all look nice. Yeah, because you know. Only season, y'all look nice. Are you throwing shade? So we met via the internet. Hashtag no back page. <laughs> oh my god. I wrote an article on funkynineva.com detailing what I thought about the show. And what did you think about the article? I was like, oh, he lost all his damn mind. Why? <laughs> because. How you gonna try to read me? You don't even know me. So I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna stop and let you explain each thing I said. Okay. Now, out of all the cast members, she is my least favorite, so I will list the positive things first. She is a beautiful black woman. All right, that is done. <laughs> the amount of pettiness that is living in this woman should be illegal. In all of her arguments, Coco is the aggressor. The sad part is that she starts all of these fights and ends up looking the worst in the end. 
And how do I look the worst? Okay, I'ma tell you. Each and every time Coco and Danny got into it, it was because Coco started it. So did you watch the first episode? I did, and you walked in, you and um, Baby Girl walked in, and you was like... No, but do you know why we uh, walked in her room? I don't know how it was edited, but the way it was supposed to play out, listen, that was not it. They can't edit what you don't give. Hunty, I walked in the shop, <laughs> Tyler said... Oh, somebody said you was a bomb on the barrel bum bitch. I'm like, oh, who, me? I said, who said it? And he looks at Danny's room. Mm -hmm. So I go over there and ask her about it. Would you not ask somebody a question if they're going around saying you were a bum person? And no, because I don't give a f if I think I'm all that and if I know I'm all that, there's a reason for me to go stoop down to another bitch's love and see what they're talking about. Well, Let's... I went to go ask her about it. You started it, though. No, she started because she was telling people that I was a bum. So I asked her. Mm-hmm. Started it. Moving on. Ink Man would not have air her coochie credit score. <laughs> what the f would I be writing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ink Man would not have air her coochie credit score out if you were not concerned with what him and Baby Girl had going on. Now, you kind of brought that one on yourself. You did. No, I did not. You should have left that whole Ink Man Baby Girl situation alone. Had nothing you had to do to be with very you. mindful of what I say. No, say it. This is your I time can't. to air it out because I can't. Why? Because I can't. Just know, baby girl would never date him. Okay, ever. Yeah, I can't really go into that situation. So it looks like know. what it looks like your silence is telling me is that the producers of the show made that situation up. That's what your silence is telling me right now, Coco. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. You believe in black Jesus, not white Jesus. I'm talking about black Jesus. Yes, of course I believe. Right, and so he's whispering in my ear right now that the producers made that whole situation up. <laughs> Blink once for yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got my answer. Okay, I'll take that one away then. Sorry. Okay, well since we on this subject of Coco Ink Man, baby girl, even though I did not like you all the time on the show, I do not agree with any man disrespecting any woman, definitely in a sexual demeaning way. That is very disrespectful and I'm pretty sure he would not appreciate if someone treated his mother, daughter, niece, godchild that way. You think he care? Oh, he don't? Whatever you've seen on TV, that's the real him. Yeah, he don't care what he say to women. There was also a lot of talk around the water cooler about whether or not her and Ink Man really had bump skins back in the day. But on the show, she never confirmed. So I want to know, hey, Coco, did you really give him a little taste of the Coco? <laughs> so did y'all ever meet around the bait? I don't know. Meet after work? What you mean you don't know, Coco? That's not a great answer. I don't know. Let me ask my husband. I'm not sure. This is a nice rock. Y'all see Thank this damn rock? So me entertaining any other man is very irrelevant to me. We all have a past. Yeah, the past two. Is Every irrelevant. saint was irrelevant. a sinner. Yeah, I know. We all was out there sinning. Well, I wasn't. Yes, you was. Nope. Sin bun. Yes, you was. <laughs> <laughs> you <lie>. said sin <laughs> bun. All right, now, Coco. <laughs> be careful. Have y'all ever had any romantic interactions? Do you think I would ever be romantic with somebody like that? The fact that he said that I wanted to be in a relationship with him is just blasphemy. What? Quit playing. So you're telling me in this moment, in this time, that Coco, what you know, no, <laughs> never had any ho ho business with Ink Man. You like how I rhymed that? That was when good. the perfect time comes, the perfect opportunity, the world will know. You talk about season two, which from the words of the street ain't coming. You don't got to confirm it or not, but from what I heard, don't listen to me. <laughs> So on the season finale, we actually see surveillance footage of Ink Man choking the shit out of Baby Girl after she hit him. So I wanted to ask Coco, was this real or fake? Them last two episodes just had me like, what the fuck? What about, you know what what about That was a lot. Like that whole situation with Ink Man and Baby Girl. Mm -hmm. I ain't know nothing about that till like she called me that day, but I ain't know. Like I kept getting bits and pieces from the producers and folks that worked there. But once I seen it, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this nigga really choked you. Like, this is real life. Right. I am gathering that a lot of this sh was fake. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. In episode one, when Ramsey threw Shelly Chandelier outside onto the ground, the police came. When the police came, we saw his face. Now on episode eight, when Ink Man went Green Hulk and choked the sh out of baby girl, we didn't see the cops. Their faces were blurred out. Meaning, if your face not blurred out, that means you was meant you was meant to be there. Meaning that first scene where the cops came was fabricated. 
don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Yeah, yes, you do. When that white man pulled up, when Ramsey snatched that sh that ceiling <laughs> <laughs> and threw it out on the ground, and that white cop pulled up, and we saw it was I don't know if it was a white cop or a black cop. Anyway, I saw his face. How did that man don't get his hair cut there? I don't care if he got his vagina plucked. Ow. Whether or not, if his face was on camera and it was not blurred, he signed some form of agreement saying you're going to be here at this time, at this place, at this location for this Actually, event not true. by production. That's not true. Clear, clear the air. Educate me because I wasn't there. I'm, a, I'm, I'm. You a know, viewer. sometimes like you just pop up while you filming, and then after you done, that you have to right sign there. an agreement. So why they didn't do the same thing for the other two cops that showed up and their faces were blurred? Because how they, they probably didn't sign the agreement after they got done. And then they can't show their face. Maybe the cop wanted to be famous. You know, get a little shine. You ain't famous. You was on every episode. So what I you show I'm regular as hell. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. <laughs> Moving on. So lastly, the fallout Coco had with baby girl all involved things that did not involve Coco. It seems as if Coco was trying to control baby girl and almost lived through her. Damn. I live for myself, honey. You don't think you were a little bit invasive? No, I've always looked at baby girl as my little sister. I would want my big sister to tell me, look, don't do this. Watch out for this nigga because he real just thirst. Of course, the TV, I, I mean, they're going to play it up to be something bigger than what it is. Mm -hmm. But for them to say that I got mad at her about her hairline, that's ridiculous. Like... It did seem like you were a little pressed about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, seriously? Because I found out through everybody else at the salon. Oh, so you're telling me once again this was... I'm not telling you nothing. I'm telling you how I found out. But your air quotes <laughs> signals to me that it, it, it was a fabricated, made-up situation for the camera. Ink Man, her hair, and then her moving to Synergy. Mm -hmm. You were kind of iffy about that, too. Mm-hmm. Explain? You want to explain? Coco, you about to get on my nerves with this, with this. Explain with this, what, why with she With this, why you can't talk about this show. Now, I'm pretty sure when, when they when they was coaching y'all on the scenes and how to act, I'm pretty sure they taught y'all the lies to go with them just in case y'all had an interview. Now, come on, you got to give Who me said, some. We're not lying. Thing. We're not lying. Okay, so tell me, when she said she was moving to Synergy and you got upset, explain to me and the people why you got mad. Because we we're supposed to go together. Montana said he's gonna give us a big suite, like the suite that we had. Mm -hmm. And when we don't went over there, those suites were what? Gay big. You mm -hmm. know, we couldn't both fit in there. And we we're both supposed to go. And I found I actually came to work the next day and she was packing up leaving. I had no clue. She moves out and we see in a subsequent episodes, y'all meet up and try to talk about it, but she wasn't trying to give her the time of day. No. Are y'all in a better place now? That's my best friend. That's your best friend? So, okay. So y'all are good. Yeah. How did y'all make up? What happened? This is after, I'm assuming, the camera stopped rolling. Um, we just talked. Just talked. You know, made up. We talked. I mean, what do you want me to say? I walked in her suite to give her her clippers, and we talked. And we made up. I just get this strong feeling and sense. <laughs> That the conflict between you two was also made up for television. Blink once, nothing but yes, was, two nothing for was no. made up. Blink, you blink. That's one. I was better my eyelashes. Nah, uh, uh, I take it. It seemed like it was made up. Me watching this, shit, I'm like this stuff doesn't happen in real life. Like, <laughs> who in their real life would go in somebody's thing and rip their light out and throw out, throw it out on the street? That would happen every. Okay, well maybe I didn't grow up in those areas. Yeah, but that happens at Ramsey. Really? Yes. What else happens at happens at Ramsey? Oh shit. everything. Give me at least a good story, a good one. Your hair is ah, nice, Coco. Thank you. Best it's buoyant. Yeah, boings. I'm trying to think of like a really, really good. This is nice. You can't. Five years, four years, home. Five, four, five years. <laughs> Such a black girl's hair. Here I got from the beauty supply store, seven ninety nine a pack. <laughs> Let me back away before I break out. Wait, I'm trying to... <laughs> Don't me. Give me a good story. A really good juicy one. You bust in and she was bent over and he was knee deep. Oh no, nothing like that. Um. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> um, hmm. Come to find out it was smuggling and trafficking. Something like that. In real life. 
Well, shh, shh, cause you gotta work here, I don't. <laughs> So from part one of this interview, I gather a couple of things. This show is so goddamn fake and scripted because Coco couldn't remember none of the lies, but none of the lines, but none of the stage directions that production had given her to make this show what it was. If you're going to soft script a reality TV show, make sure you sit down with everybody and y'all have a couple rehearsals. Be sure to watch part two of this interview where Coco and I discuss the real life issues between her and her castmate, Danny. 